Good. So hi, everyone. My name is Jerome, and I am the CEO at Wazo. Wazo. Does it ring a bell to you? OK, let's check that. Who in this room has ever heard about Twilio? Come on, raise your hand. OK, almost everyone. Who in this room has ever heard about Wazo? OK, slightly less people. So we need to fix that. Wazo is the software publisher of a programmable communication platform, just the same like Twilio. But unlike Twilio, we deliver the communication platform not as an online service, but in a hybrid way, on any type of infrastructure. And this opens up the way to a breadth of innovative and sustainable communication solutions. I'm here today to tell you why open communication matters for your business. Oh, I love the 21st century. We're just one click away from any kind of service. I plan a trip to New York for the weekend with my darling, and we need the perfect location. So I go on Airbnb. It's easy, very convenient. I get the perfect room. Then we, when we're back, I would like to party hard home. So I need a chef. I need a DJ, I need a bartender, and I can hire those people very easily, just one click with Insta Hire. And for business as well, it's very convenient. My COO, my chief of operation, Benoit, is really enthusiastic about SaaS uh, software for HR, for CRM. It's very well designed, it runs well, uh, it's very intuitive, you do not need any training, it scales well. So SaaS seems to be a good approach to solve business issues. But is that really the case? Just take another example. You are a manufacturer, and you would like to increase your production capacity. Would you go on Airbnb and rent a facility, put in all your machinery, put in all your workforce, and pay a rent on a daily basis? Well, it does not make any sense. Another case, you're a startup and you would like to become the market leader in communication platform enablement. Would you hire a CEO overnight? No, it doesn't seem a good solution. If you want to create value over the long term, at some point for your core business, you need to be in control. If you want to be in control, you need to avoid the lock-in traps. And we see three different levels of lock-in. The first one being low-level risk related to service lock-in. My CEO, Benoit, whenever our HR SaaS goes bankrupt, he would take the data back and find another software service, and it will take some time to build integration, but we will be, we'll make do with it, no problem. The second level of lock-in is related to data. Imagine you're a retailer, and every time you need to get to your customers, you go through Google. You need to pay your customer every time. That's a heavy risk, uh, a heavy lock-in. And now the third risk is related to dev. If you build your stack, if you build your value, on a technology stack that you do not control, that's a heavy problem. Imagine all of a sudden your technology provider would decide to would go bankrupt or would decide to double the tariff or would decide to launch a competitive offer to use. That's a problem. So there seems to be a trade-off. You can either decide to go to quickly to the market and have a speed access to the value proposition, get to SaaS model, have an OPEX business model, or you may decide to go for a long-term control, and then it's CapEx intensive, but you have governance, you keep control on your margin and on, on your technology. Is there no way to overcome this heartbreaking trade-off? Just imagine, we could get the both of two words. You could enjoy the ride rapidly. 
test and try rapidly on the market your new solution. And when it becomes successful, you put it at a mission critical level. And then over time, you get full control of your stack. You have control on your margin, you have control on your quality of service, you have control on your roadmap. Are, are there any solution to this issue? Actually, there are. And the solution is called open source, open source software. Open source has the potential to disrupt any major IT industry, and actually, it does. Today, open source companies are the ones uh, who have the, the largest figures in terms of buyout, in terms of financing. This definitely demonstrates that open source software has get to a business grade level. Those slides are provided by uh, Joseph Jacks at uh, OSS Capital. It's uh, the first venture capital fund specifically focused on open source. So why is that so? Open source deals a lot with community, and this is very, it's a very key factor. Community will test, try your solution. You will have close feedback loops so that your code is stronger robust, and also you have feedback about the features that are in your code, so that you have a perfect product market fit. It accelerates business tremendously. Second point is related to code transparency. You know what's in the code. It's no longer a black box. So this is sensitive for some users, such as army, administration, banks, pharmaceutical industry, whatsoever. Everybody is interested in having control on its stack. And then the third factor is related to the fact that open source is natively open. It's interoperable, and from there you can build any solution that you like. And why is this revolution taking place now? OK, developers now rule the world. Back 15 years or 20 years back, I used to be an investment banker. And when I went to nightclub, oh, we were the kings, girls, and, and we could party. Now, <laughs> that's not the same case anymore. Developers are, are the king. They know, they, know, uh, they know what is great piece of software and what is not. They are the decision maker. It's no longer a top-down approach, but a bottom-up approach. So developers drive the business, and developers know and love open source. So now, let's get a step further and focus specifically on telecom. There are already many great pieces of technology related to telecommunication stack. You all know those, uh, those technologies. You can take Asterix or FreeSwitch, Camellio or OpenSIP. Uh, they have individually a great value. Problem is that they go into every direction. So having them work together, work together perfectly, is a hard challenge. It's costly. It might be also hazardous. So you need to put some glue around it. And this is what we do at Wazo. We encapsulate all those pieces of technology, and we make sure that the, the open source component work perfectly well. Actually, every CPaaS uh, solution that you find on the market use also the same pieces of technology, the same underlying pieces. But they keep the value for themselves. Our purpose at Wazo is to offer this stack, this fully functional stack, to everyone. So we hear about punk uh, IT, and well, this is what we do. We go and see the, communi the, co the community uh, in communication, and we aggregate those pieces, and we make it business grade. That's our trade at Wazo. So a bit background about our company. We have people coming both from the telecom world, the uh, open source telecom, VoIP, uh, and so on. And on the other end, we also have senior people coming from the IT infrastructure, dealing with OpenStack, with orchestration. 
Uh, and what's unique about Oiseau is that we combine those two uh, expertise with a strong focus on open source. We are an international group since we have two offices in two different countries, so that's international. And it's even more international since uh, we have uh, broad communities and we have partners everywhere around the planet. So, at the core of Wazo, there is our Wazo platform, our core engine. It is designed with a architecture, full architecture of microservices. It is cloud native and it is fully API centric. And you can manage those, uh, those, this platform with uh, API, a vast, rich library of APIs. We have 450 APIs that are available publicly. Those APIs are well documented. It's easy to use. You can implement them easily into your code, into your own workflows. We have very positive feedback about our APIs. A differentiating fact factor is related to our hybrid infrastructure. You can implement those Wazo engine on any kind of infrastructure, on public data center or on your own private infrastructure so that you can keep control on your margin. And actually, it's already in the market, in productions. For example, we work with the equivalent of the 911 in Europe, and they use the Wazo Telecom stack as the stack to build their next generation of service. What they do is use location-based features, or text-to-speech, or AI, and from there, they can, save, they can solve the, their prioritization issue. They win they save time, and they save lives. Another thing that we do at Wazo is that we build ourselves our own UC suite on top of our platform. A UC suite which includes a client application, mobile, desktop, broader, but also a, a Nestbox management tool to orchestrate infrastructure to deal with clients, with partners, and with users. What is really unique about Wazo is that this unified communication suite is built on, natively built on a programmable platform so that we can augment it, we can enrich it. Most solutions on the market are the result of acquisition. You can take Vonage and Nexmo, the programmable feature is not based on the same technology like the historical business. So, based on this uh, unified communication solution, we go, straight, we go indirectly, not straight, to the unified communication market. And we have the ability to power, at the same time, operators and integrators who do not have many developing capacity and they can use our own on-the-shelf suite and go to the market. They have a UCAS offer. We are UCAS enabler. But we are also able to deal with the new generation of software telecom vendors. They can use our telecom stack and build on top their own user interface and bring specific value. We also deal with a UK operator which bundles at the same time a UC solution and a fiber to target the SMB market. So we, we are getting to a very large market indirectly. So by now, you must have a fair idea of what Wazo is. We bring to the market a communication platform that allows anyone to build its own value. So I can ask the question once again. Now, who in this room has ever heard about Wazo? Everybody should raise the hand by now, okay? So we're here to open your communication. We're here to free your communication and we're here to help you control your communication. Okay, so next time, as a manufacturer, you would like to increase your production capacity and you will not go on Airbnb to get a better location. You know that there are alternatives, think twice. There are alternatives. So, 
If you have any interest in building your own solution on top of your platform, come and see us. If you want to participate and enrich the ecosystem with your own bricks, you're welcome as well. Come and see us. And in the case you want to contribute to the core technology, you are also welcome. So if you have interest in us, I believe we also have interest in you. We'd like to hear from you. That's it. <laughs> Okay, you can think about it. Uh, we have our team here. We have a question here. Hi, Roger Lawls Ericsson. Uh, just a general, general question. You talk about um, um, uh, programmable platforms um, uh, enriching communication. Do you foresee that you would facilitate um, interface with um, uh, exposure functions from the mobile communication network? Oh, uh, yes, in uh, of course we have SIP uh, exposition yeah. to any kind of SIP provider. So we can deal, uh, of course, we, we deal with voice, we deal with messages, we deal with video, we deal with fax, yeah. uh, the, 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 and we will work later on IoT and payments and so on. This is on the roadmap. So we, we're increasing our feature coverage over time. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's ambitious, and, and we already solve uh, easy uh, use cases, and, and we will progress very rapidly because we have the capacity to develop and ship fast. Okay. Good. Thanks.